Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I have a very special custom knife overview and presentation to share with you guys. This absolutely spectacular piece is the JD Van Deventer. So sorry if I mispronounced his name. Gold Standard Premium. Holy moly. Um, now I'm going to uh, let you guys know. I mean, obviously, this was sent to me by Sierra underscore bound. Yeah, I'm wearing gloves today. It's not because the knife is delicate. It's not because you can't touch it or it explodes or something. Like that. No, it's to keep the fingerprints off of it while I showcase it in 4K so that you guys can look at the knife and not my gross fingerprints. Um, this was sent to me by Scott. Obviously, Sierra underscore bound on Instagram. If you guys are not following Scott, you absolutely should. It's worth it just to look at his collection. I've always said I think Scott has, in my opinion, the most impressive knife collection on the internet. <laughs> He's kind enough to share amazing pieces like this uh, with me and uh, ultimately you guys here on the channel. So thank you very much. Make sure you follow uh, Sierra underscore bound on Instagram. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And you know, if you have time, follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I show some cool knives too. <laughs> okay, so um, this is not a review. This is a custom knife. I'm sure you guys can guess it's really, really expensive. This was um, made specifically for Scott. Uh, so it's his, right? He paid for it. Scott's a collector, as am I, right? Also a knife enthusiast. Um, but, you know, you probably know what the deal is. You clicked on this video, so I don't need to give you the regular speech. Uh, but it, it makes no sense to review this knife. And, and as I've always maintained, um, I like to sort of showcase custom knives and talk about, you know, some of the amazing aesthetic features um, and functional features too. Um, but it's, you know, I, I, I'm very much in this territory kind of out of my league. Um, as long as I've been reviewing knives and been a knife enthusiast, this piece of glove got in my mouth. <laughs> as long as I've been a knife enthusiast, collector, et cetera, et cetera, I can't pretend to know everything there is to know about this stuff. Um, so it's just that and the fact that this was, you know, kind of a one-off. There's just a lot of reasons not to do an actual review. I'll still do some measurements and showcase this for you guys. I want to read this um, this here that Scott uh, sent with the knife. I think it's better than just trying to remember everything. J.D. Van Deventer, uh, in parentheses, JDVD Knives, who you can absolutely find on Instagram, is a South African custom knife maker that started building knives in 2005. He works in a one-man shop and built most of the machines he uses in the knife making process. So this guy he built the machines that he uses, which is pretty cool. Not unheard of. I have heard of that before. I mean, it makes sense. If you're going to you know, be in this business for as long as you are, you're going to want things to work exactly the way that you want them to work. So once you understand how the machines work, making your own machines to make the process better, I can understand that, right? I mean, at the, at the most simple level. Um, like most of the great South African makers, his attention to quality, fit finish, uh, fit and finish, and especially glassy action put him at the, uh, put him and them at the top of the craft. Yeah, definitely. Uh, JDVD has a naming convention to many in his line. The gold is the model. He also does the silver model. The standard is the size, standard being full size, and the premium are truly special builds that are the pinnacle of his work. This being one of those examples. This is the absolute pinnacle, or it is an example of his pinnacle work. Finally, this gold standard line was designed by well-known uh, well Jared Van Otterloot, or JVO, who you guys I'm sure are familiar uh, with. This piece was built to my spec and still to this day is one of my very favorites. I can understand why. It's a forever piece, meaning we'll never leave. It sports black Timasca scales, clip and collars, zerk bolsters or zirconium bolsters, a polished damascus steel blade, and IKBS uh, bearings. All that and JD is a super nice human being and an absolute pleasure to deal with. He also requests that I do not spit on his knife. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Um, this is, uh, it's absolutely, absolutely stunning. You know, damascus steel, I mean, it, 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 these materials by themselves are expensive materials, right? I mean, only a little tiny bit of what's on this knife is something that we might consider to be plain. The heat from my hands, like, that's, that's, 
the the heat from my hands actually gets it picks up and it's not a it's not a fingerprint but it creates like this sort of you know you can see right there uh, the only basic material on this knife is the titanium in the liners and even there the contrast between the liners and the zerk bolsters right but if you're not familiar this material here this sort of glowy <laughs> why is the Part of this glove is determined to be in my mouth this whole time. I don't even know how it got there. But um, this uh, sort of glowy plasma looking material here is titanium Damascus that has been layered with zirconium. So you can actually see the layers of titanium and the layers of zirconium. And then we have this transition from zirconium to Damascus, which is beautiful. The pivot color is also zirconium. And we have a uh, Zerkatai uh, clip, and then it's kind of neat, you know, on uh, the pieces like the backspacer, you can actually see the layers uh, in, in the Zerkatai. And I realize most of you know what this is, but, you know, we, we, get new, we got new people, right? All the time. Uh, then we have Damasteel, which, again, if you're new, is not the same thing as your, you know, just sort of basic uh, or general Damascus. Damascus can be any two compositions. It can literally be a saw blade and part of, you know, some old metal device that your grandpa, like it could be melted down and turned into Damascus. You have no idea what it is, right? Not all Damascus is the same, right? I always get that one guy in the back that's like, technically, well, the, the original recipe for Damascus is lost to time. It's called Woods. Oh, I use Google, but I'm going to pretend like I didn't tonight. Yeah, I, we know. <laughs> this is damn as steel. It's proprietary to the Damasteel company. It's made with a modern technique that is undoubtedly superior to anything that came from the past. I know people like to pretend that ancient wizard technology and all of this is somehow, ancient, ancient swordsmiths somehow had like secret tech, you know, no. Uh, this is PMC 27 and RWL 34, which are proven to be extremely performance oriented compositions um, when combined. RWL 34 by itself is amazing. Um, but on top of that, I mean, it's not, uh, the reason I'm saying all this, uh, it's not just, you know, the, it, the, the individual materials, but the combined material is an expensive material. And then to go back and mirror polish it, holy moly, we got a lot of damage steel, you know, I always maintain that whatever the original price is of a knife, you add damage steel to it. If it's made by a Chinese company. A uh, fair markup is 150 to 180 bucks. Here lately, they've been marking it up about 300 dollars, right? Just for the blade, but they don't go. They don't mirror polish it. This has been mirror polished, <laughs> so the cost in the blade is pretty significant. And then, you know, you got to go back and add like the zirconium and the Timascus and all of that. Um, what did he pay for this? I don't know. Not really the point. If you're interested in picking up, if you're actually interested in picking up a custom piece, then the best thing to do is to check him out on um, Instagram. I'm gonna disengage this this way, and here's why. See, when I use gloves, it, it liner lock, no matter what, it gets caught in there. The action is very hydraulic smooth. So, not hydraulic like a Sabenza. That's just kind of tight. Um, this is kind of, uh, it makes me think a lot of like how the action is in a sharp by design knife. Um, it's not the same type of luxury that you get from like a, like an ultra guillotine false, uh, false shut knife. It's more like a perfectly consistent, even smoothness. The flipping action is <laughs> phenomenal. I think the overall aesthetic, I mean, you know, it's just like other custom knife makers. They work with these crazy materials if you want those materials. Scott's like me uh, in the sense that he likes the combination of this kind of medium polished black zirconium. It's almost got in areas it has kind of that oil slick look to it, right? He likes that contrast with the blue and purple Timascus or zirconium Timascus. It just looks really good. I also really like that in combination with Damasteel. Uh, the polish on you know, the damage steel goes even further, right? This is absolutely right up my alley. And Scott was part of the reason why, you know, that uh, this look, you know, attracts me so much. It's a big knife. We haven't even measured it yet. We're 10 minutes in. Overall length, keep that away from the knife. Overall length is eight and a half inches. Blade length, I'm going to call that 
just shot, I'm gonna call it 3.65. Cutting edge is absolutely, it's like a hair shy, 3.45 inches. Pretty, pretty good size knife, definitely. Um, fairly thick blade stock, not gonna put my calipers on it. Um, to me, that looks like about 145 thousandths. I'll do a couple of size comparisons here. I just don't really want anything else like too close to this knife, understandably, right? Um, this invites comments like, why would you ever, why would you ever pay something if you're just too concerned with it? it? Why? You're already here. You clicked on this video, right? You know what's going on. It's not yours. You didn't pay for it. You don't even have to be concerned with it. All that's important is that I respect <laughs> the property that is not my own by not, you know, putting it at risk if the original owner does not want a mark on it, right? Then uh, it's probably a good idea that I wear gloves and keep it completely and totally away as to the best of my ability from other knives that might put marks on it. What I'm saying is that's a really nice way of saying shut up and save your breath because I, I can't be bothered with it. Um, <laughs> who is this metal complex guy? I am not subscribing to him. He is a pompous ass. Anyways, the, uh, <laughs> the overall size here <laughs> is uh, definitely larger than, you know, like the PM2 and the Para 3 for sure. Uh, we'll do the rat, right? We'll do this one. And um, did we already do the rat? So I can't remember. I'll put it up against the bug out. Just a couple here to give you an idea, right? Not a, uh, not a typical review. It's going to be heavy. It's pointless to weigh it because it depends on the material that you go with, right? Um, I'm a big fan of the harpoon notch look. I really like that. The, the other thing that I like, even though, I mean... I always, I always appreciate knurling. I don't know why. I, I think knurling on knives just looks good. Um, it's pretty aggressive knurling there on the um, the flipper tab, but it, it does work. Um, if you want to, I have to adjust my hand because the gloves really want to slip off everything. If you want to push button it, you absolutely can. I think it works better um, light switching it. I just really like how every part of this knife kind of flows together. And ergonomically, it's very good. We exist, uh, this this knife exists in a territory, and this is always really confusing if you're new. And again, I'm not trying to be a, a pompous gatekeeper or anything like that, because I get it. I mean, if you're new, if you clicked on this video and you have no idea what you're looking at here, the general mindset to somebody who's very, very new to custom knives is, ah, I see, there are two different worlds. There's the functional world, and then there's the non-functional dressy world. These super expensive dressy knives must be very, very delicate. For some reason, people default to this thought process. And while um, there does exist a world where um, there are art knives, and those art knives are very, very delicate and not actually functional, um, that is not what you're looking at. In fact, um, that is really not the... I would say the far more celebrated part of the um, the ultra custom knife world where like knife makers handcraft things and create things. Um, the part of the knife world where, you know, there's actual like major attention on it for the most part is in the functional ultra high end custom uh, part of it, right? What I'm saying is you are not looking at something that is delicate and cannot be used. You are not looking at something that is not performance oriented. You're actually looking at something that is extremely durable and extremely functional. Damasteel is made to function. Can it look good? Yeah, that's why they put RWL34 in it because it polishes up so well in combination with PMC27. So you get performance that is it, the equivalent essentially of CPM 154, but you get this aesthetic, which is really nice. And it's the reason why so many custom knife makers work with Damasteel, right? It, it takes such an amazing polish. Zorkatai looks amazing, right? It has the benefit of being ultra lightweight and just as strong as titanium. Zirconium is also very durable. Neither material can corrode, at least not the like steel, right? I mean, like, if you'll put it in the ocean for a long time, I think you get some type of corrosion after a while, but not in the regular, not just walking around, right? So you get all that. Uh, it's a liner lock, which has proven to be extremely durable, right? Not as durable as the triad lock, but then again, the triad lock is completely and totally overkill. You'll break every part of the blade before you budge the lock. <laughs> so as long as the blade on a liner lock would function the same way without abusing it, there's not necessarily a need for anything more, right? It just depends on, I don't know. I don't know if I want to open up that can of worms. A liner lock is perfectly fine for this, and there's a reason that you see that consistently in the custom knife world. It works, right? Um, so yeah, 
that is the case. I mean, it's like I said, there are uh, there are art knives, there are non-functional art knives. It's just, it's not that that's that's what people assume is the separation between you know your functional economic utilitarian knives and your ultra high end custom knives. Um, and that's I used to assume that too. I honestly had no idea when I got into this that knives could be both incredibly beautiful and extremely utilitarian and extremely beautiful. I think I'm going to do a couple of close ups here. Um, if you've never watched uh, a custom knife overview and presentation, it really is. I mean, if you're wondering to yourself, is this really just going to be like 15 to 20 minutes of him rambling about loosely related knife things and showing close ups of a really expensive knife? Yep. That's pretty much it. That's kind of how I've been doing it for about five years now. Um, that's, uh, you know, it's a talent to just be able to talk and talk and talk and not really say anything. <laughs> There's even a lanyard uh, deal on here. This really is gorgeous. And uh, it's like, uh, you know, we've said many times, I don't know what's going on, you know, with uh, South African custom knife makers, but they're all just amazingly talented. Um, and, uh, it, it's to the point whenever, uh, to, it's to the point now that whenever someone says, you know, I, I want you to check this out, this is by South African knife, knife maker, et cetera, et cetera. I just get really excited and I don't mean to lump them all together because there are similarities, right? There obviously, a lot of them are learning the same techniques, but it's not to say that every single knife that comes from South Africa feels exactly the same. Absolutely not. There are differences, differences that you, you know, kind of have to pick up and hold an experience, right? A lot of it comes from the design, the aesthetic language, things like that. Detents are tuned slightly differently. Um, uh, the, the, the action feels a little bit different. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they all have their own different design language. I What I like about this is kind of the taller, uh, like the, the height of the handle, the height of the blade. I, I, I like that look. I don't like as much. I mean, it's still fine. I don't like as much a slender knife, especially when we're looking at a larger knife. I want something that's going to fill out the hand, right? This is this does feel like a large knife, but it doesn't feel oversized. Everything feels like it's supposed to be the size that it is. It's supposed to be the thickness that it is. Um, I, I feel... <laughs> I don't usually make assumptions like this, but I feel like if the maker and I were to, you know, put our hands together, right? Just a very long, intimate high five. <laughs> that, that our hands would be almost exactly the same size. Um, this really just kind of melts into my hand. Um, Scott, I think this is uh, absolutely one of the most beautiful pieces that um, I've ever seen come out of your collection. Uh, this is one of those knives where I actually had to change shirts if you can see right here so like there's my there's my neck and my chin i had to change uh shirts i had to wear a white shirt i was wearing a red shirt and the reflectivity of this blade was so intense it was like picking up and intensifying the red of my shirt back into the surface of the blade and it was absolutely ruining the contrast, right? This knife is also the reason. If you might, you might be wondering, like, well, okay, here's here's you, right? If you're looking at the reflection, here's the neck. We'll go up, and there's your face. Here's your weird face, your nostrils. There's your hat, and then there's some white stuff back here, and it, that looks like, okay, well, that's that's your phone. It's recording, and then we got some maybe woodwork, right? But is the ceiling? It's just like a white ceiling, right? The, Knives like this are the reason that I have diffuser sheets on the ceiling because it is just woodwork. It's just exposed woodwork uh, or framework down here. I had to put diffuser sheets up there so that it wasn't reflecting the color of wood back into the blade, but rather white. So you can actually see, you know, the contrast between uh, the, um, the, the etch here on the damasteel. It just looks better. Uh, it was legitimately knives like these that I I had to redo the way that my studio is down here <laughs> so you guys could see everything. Really, really excellent work. Really beautiful. Um, it's always amazing to see that, you know, while certain elements of these knives are are certainly, you know, machine made, uh, they're made, the, the, the elements here are done by machines that were created by the person who designed or creates the knives, right? Even though this one was designed by somebody else. 
or the gold standard line was. Um, the sorry, I'm forgetting the uh, Jared Van Otterloo, JVO. It's nice to see so much human element in something in a, a world and a time period where everything is machine made. Some things aren't even made with the intelligence of human beings anymore, and we still have things like this that are largely, you know, uh, they are um, conceived and created by a person, right? And if not a person, then a machine that was heavily modified or altered in order to create a very, very specific aesthetic. Um, so this is really cool. It's honestly, it, it's an honor to get to handle stuff like this. It's an honor to get to experience stuff like this and share it with you guys. Um, I, you know, I know the reason that there's really not a whole lot more meat to this video is because you're watching it for the same reason that I used to watch the same content. I still do, right? You just want to look at the thing. You just want to imagine what it's like to hold it, to, uh, to flip it, right? And even though I haven't been doing what I should be doing, which is doing the sounds and things, uh, you want to you wanna hear that, right? Because it's the closest you can get to experiencing it from, you know, your couch or your bed or wherever you're watching this, right? Your desk at work. <laughs> ah, I know you're watching this at work. It's all right. <laughs> I get it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's amazing. And I, I uh, you know, after handling this stuff, I, I can only um, recommend uh, that people take time to go to a show, even though I've never been, right? I have the luxury of having people send me stuff here so that I can look at it in the comfort of my own home and post it on my YouTube channel. But it is absolutely worth going to a show and experiencing some of these makers and getting to handle some of their stuff in person because it really is next level. It really does put into perspective the difference between something like this and what we're all used to seeing at a store, right? Where you can go and handle things, you know, like commonly, I guess. Really cool. Awesome stuff. I don't know that there's really a whole lot more that I can say. Um, there's not, not many people still watching after 20 some minutes, but this was a joy. Scott, thank you so much for sharing this. I, uh, I'm actually going to have to take this glove off, <laughs> pull his uh, Instagram tag back down here, his handle. Please make sure to follow Sierra underscore bound on Instagram uh, just to check out, you know, all of his stuff. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.